NFTs are blowing up and as a blockchain developer, you have to jump on the opportunity. In this video, I will show you five super useful libraries for NFTs. Most of these libraries are not very famous, but they are all very useful and very simple to use. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. The first library I wanted to show you is OpenZipLink. If you have been in blockchain development for a while, you probably know what is OpenZipLink. OpenZipLink is a Solidity library that implements some standard functionalities, including EAS20 tokens. It's considered a best practice to use OpenZipLink for your smart contract because all the code of OpenZipLink is open source and is regularly audited, which means you can be pretty confident that the code is secure and bug free. Beside YAS20 tokens, OpenZipLink also offer an implementation of YAS721 and YAS1155, the two token standards that are used to create NFTs. To create your NFT smart contract with OpenZipLink, it's very simple. You just have to import the OpenZipLink library in your Solidity code. You inherit from YAS721 or YAS1155, and that's it. It's also possible to customize your ERC721 token with various options like burnable, enumerable, etc. OpenZipLink is really the basics in the world of NFT programming and you absolutely have to know how to create an NFT with OpenZipLink. Next, I'm going to show you a library a little bit more specific. OpenSea is the largest NFT marketplace. In August, the trading volume of NFTs on OpenSea reached a record $3.4 billion. At this pace, OpenSea will quickly become the coin base of NFTs. If you want to be in the NFT industry, you just cannot ignore OpenSea. On OpenSea, you can buy and sell NFTs. There are two markets. The primary market, that's when the creator of an NFT sells the NFT for the first time. It usually uses an auction mechanism and we use the term minting. And the other market is the secondary market, that's when an NFT that was already minted is sold again. End users can do all of these actions on the website of OpenSea. But it's also possible to do these actions programmatically by using the API of OpenSea. And the easiest way to use the API is to use OpenSea.js, a JavaScript client for the API. I check out the different features and it's extremely comprehensive. You can basically create your own NFT marketplace by using OpenSea as a backend. You can start with simple actions like fetching the information of some NFTs that are traded on OpenSea, but you can also place buy or sell orders with this library. An interesting detail is that there is a referral field on the trading system, which allow you to get some referral fees if your website refer a buyer or a seller to OpenSea. You can also create auction for NFTs. You can also read the order book and there are many other actions. I learned a lot about the features of OpenSea by studying this library, so I really recommend to check it out. Minty is a command line tool for NFTs. It allows you to deploy and mint NFTs. When Minty deploys your NFTs, it not only deploys the spot contract, but it also deploys the associated metadata, which means the image and the various properties that are attached to your NFT. It can deploy the metadata on IPFS pinning services like NFT.storage or Pinata. IPFS is a decentralized file system that is very used to deploy the metadata of NFTs. One of the problems of IPFS is that in order to keep your files in the network, you have to pin them, otherwise they are destroyed after a few days. Pinning normally costs money because under the hood it requires participants who run IPFS nodes and who commit to keep your files, but with services like Pinata, you can pin files for free up to a certain amount of data. To install Minty, you just need to have NPM installed, so it's pretty easy. Use NFT is a library to display NFTs in React applications. It provides a React hook that is ready to use. It's very easy to install and configure, and to fetch NFTs, you just have to use the use NFT hook and provide the address and the token ID of the NFT. It will return different objects, including a boolean value to indicate when the data is ready. When the call is completed, you will have all the metadata of the NFT ready to use, like the name of the NFT, the image, the owner, etc. 
It's very easy to use, it's compatible with React and it's very useful, so it's a good idea to make it part of your toolkit. CryptoPunk was one of the first NFT collection. When CryptoPunk was first launched a few years ago, nobody thought much about it. It was just a bunch of pixelated, funny characters. But a few years after, it was rediscovered by the community and became extremely popular. Some of these CryptoPunks sold for more than $100,000. After the success of CryptoPunk, we started to see a new wave of NFT project built with generative art. With generative art, we use code to generate art. And if you are a developer, that's great news because you can leverage your coding skills to create an NFT collection. If you want to do abstract generative art, it's possible to use some libraries. And that's why I want to introduce you p5.js. p5.js is a library, is a JavaScript library that allows you to create different shapes in a web page. By combining algorithm and a library like p5.js, you can generate a lot of different shapes that you can use in an NFT collection. So if you can combine your blockchain skills with some creative, with some creative skills by using a library like p5.js, it's gonna be a very powerful combination of skills. Out of these five libraries, you will probably use at least OpenZeppelin to create your NFT. The other libraries are less famous, but can be very useful as well. Next, if you want to keep learning about NFTs as a blockchain developer, the best thing is to make a full project for NFT. And for this, you can follow this tutorial where we code an NFT app to visualize NFTs and show their metadata in the front end. I will see you there.